instances here. Um, I haven't really seen them play overly aggressive, except on the rounds that they've lost. And I think that if they notice that, and notice that the rounds that they do play overly aggressive, they lose, that they're gonna notice that playing this stall is exactly what they need to do. You know, the attacking team top frag right now has not been able to really punish their um, stalls, except on opening picks. So if they give top frag the opening pick that they're looking for, they're just playing into exactly what Top Frag wants. We are going to see the drone again there from Nyx taking K9 Valk. Looks like the rest of the team is going to be playing from underneath. I wonder what the goal is here. Are they going to take directly onto site? They do know that they are playing the upstairs as per usual. Looks like they are going to go upstairs, but just take a master bedroom over. What's the goal here? What exactly are they planning on hoping to do here, Assault? I would guess something along the lines of they were checking to see if they could do an underneath take and then they they saw something that said no we can't do that so they're going to go back to their standard take of clearing across. It's also safer starting out underneath and then working your way up because repelling in Solarium can be a little risky. Absolutely. It does look like they are going to get the opening pick on the table. Lycus is going to start that off. It is the opposite of what's happened every single round, which hopefully means that it is going to work out in their favor. We just have to see how Top Rank is going to respond here. Um, obviously, the Jaeger ADSs are very prominent. Smoke's even going to throw a canister outside of the window, but that nade's going to get in there. It's going to sneak by. I think that shield is gone on top blue stairs. The only shield they have to worry about now is the one that's out there on the... Um, balcony what's the goal another smoke kill wow wow that's <laughs> that's ironic the one weakness finca has is what he dies to absolutely um you know we are looking at a 5v3 now not looking too good for top frag they did get the blue shield down Jaeger is still playing the main shield Smoke's pretty low on health, but so is the entirety of the attacking team. They're going to get another pick there on the smoke. Smoke's not even playing the shotgun. He's playing the FMG9. He knows what he wants to do. He wants to get those long-range picks. Playing there on blue stairs obviously has its advantages with the head glitch. And there's another pick for Pande. I mean, that's just a round there. Lucius is going to get a pick. I'm not sure how many he's going to get. It's not looking too good for him or his team right now. Um, I don't even want to know what the rest of the team is saying. Pande is going to close out that round with a final pick. I believe that was a 4K there for Smoke and a great round by Lycus. Big, big difference between that attack and the previous attack was putting someone on the window early. Um, that's, that's where Lion created his opening pick the first round. Uh, the first time around they went to that and then not putting someone on that window again because he was with them in piano caused some guy to get swung on uh, caused the uh, I believe it was the Finca player I could be wrong though but it caused someone it to get what? He, the lion took the wild swing and he tried to contest the guy deep library and lost Is it, was it the lion player? yeah the lion swung to kill the guy in deep library who was and, and, and he got the pick and draw yeah so yeah I, I just I think not having someone early on the window to play cutoffs for anyone wanting to contest um, piano early is kind of the misplay on that one. Absolutely. They are going to come into round six right now. Top Frag here is definitely hoping to even it out before they switch sides. Um, you know, Top Frag has been a pretty well off defense uh, team, as we saw from the last map there. Um, we're going to see what they can do here on defense on Chalet. Their attacks have not been bad. They just have been getting countered by Lycus. Lycus is playing there for specifically stalling. Um, even on that last round, with all the picks that they got, they did not get overly aggressive. They stayed where they were and continued to get the picks. Um, the goal here, hopefully, with Top Frag is that they're going to take map control early and run with it. They don't want to have that stall work against them they want to have it work in their favor the earlier they take the map control the better off they are later in the round sly wolf uh, uh, is it did it crash i had a feeling it was it was yeah. showing kbs that's why i was looking down below that's why when he said something i wasn't i wasn't seeing let me uh i'll see if i can restart it give me a sec I can use my mouse? Is it going to let me use my mouse? 
No, we're not. There we go. Uh, I think it just came easier. back. I may be able to host the next game. My uh, internet is very stable. So no, it just... It, I don't know why it... It's back now. It should be good. It's or it should be coming back in a second. It's up. You're good. Okay. Perfect. We are up there. All right. We are going to get the early pick there on the castle. <laughs> Tabled is in chat. Top Rack has been in chat every game for almost the entirety of the game. They are in Lycus's head, and nobody can tell them that they are not. Um, at this point, it's completely up to you know, Top Rack. They got to run with the map control that they got, getting a bit of damage there on the mute, fragging over top of that wall. I think opening up that wall is going to add a load of unpredictability to holding that site. Um, you know, you get a lot more angles to check there and a lot more people to be worried about. They still have a player upstairs and a player down in basement that Frost is going to look for a flank, if I had to guess. Finca is trying to clear out the top floor players, both Jaeger and Mute. At this point, there's only one person on site and it's completely up to Top Rag to find them and notice that they... Oh my gosh, the pick on the Frost there. They are going to get Frost, but they are also going to lose the Finca. It's completely up to them now. They have to run with the mana advantage that they have. If they were to drone more, oh my gosh, Lucius with the 2k. Take sight right now, and you guys have got the round one. There goes Nyx with the final pick. That's going to end out the round. That is going to bring the first half of the match done, and they are going to have it completely tied up. What are we looking for here coming into defense for top frag assault? Uh, for top frag, it's it's really hard because chalet is a map where you need to be winning your attack rounds. Uh, so defense, uh, everything's got to be locked up. You got to be going in, um, taking your two v ones is kind of the biggest thing. Uh, creating three v threes and taking two v ones are going to be your most important thing coming into defense. Uh, to make Absolutely. sure you're getting as many of them as possible. And Sly Wolf, what are we looking for here on attack with Lycus? I think the biggest thing to look for and something that they struggled with on the previous map was actually being able to work together to get into the building. Something they were very reliant on last map was holding the cutoffs, but the issue was is there was no one to push them to the cutoffs. The only thing that came from it was the defenders pushing themselves to the cutoffs, and that's when Lycus would get attacked. Absolutely. So, obviously coming into a tied match, it is clear that attack is not necessarily favored for top frag. Um, but we can just hope that the defense is going to come through. Um, they still have that momentum from last match. We will see what's going to happen here. Lycus is obviously a wonderful team. Top Frag just got put together a couple of hours ago from what I was told. <laughs> We're going to see what they can uh, do here. Um, you know, a bunch of players. I've, I've played with all of these guys before, and uh, they all have a unique play style, but it definitely seems to be coming together in this match. Um, as well as the previous two. We're going to see a lot of open area, open hatches. Um, people playing kind of spread all about here on defense. Um, they're not necessarily playing for trades right now. I think that may come to bite them in the butt if they do not play this correctly. Ash quickly getting into trophy. Um, they're definitely taking this map control early. They look like they might push up solar stairs. And he, this Ash can't see the guy in bathroom. Good frag there by Tabled. Ginga is not going to get a frag that he wanted. Sapuku is dead, though. And there goes another frag on Formac with the Yana. What a great refrag there. Good cutoff there position. Tabled. Absolutely. They're still playing pretty spread out here. One on blue stairs, one in library, one on site. I think that they have to play for picks here. They're obviously down man advantage. They are going to get droned out. But the other team, the attacking team like us here, is all pushing from one side. That also could come to bite them in the butt if they do not figure out how to swing at the same time. Let's see what they have to do about this. Maybe they open up the wall and be their best bet and in their best interest. The drones are coming out there. Um, they are taking it slow for the man advantage, which is good for them. What will they do now? I think right now you just kind of play standard siege. You just slowly clear out each shield, move each position, cause displacements, and then make plays. 
Absolutely, that shield there on top blue stairs is gone. Mute got off the position quick. Brave is gonna get that frag there. Yana is just getting that pick early. Um, still playing blue stairs there. Uh, Lucius is hopeful. Nyx is still on site. What's the goal here? Are they gonna push? Or are they gonna just wait and keep droning? They have the two-man advantage. Even if they were to just play straight trades right now, they'd win. But it looks like they are going to be taking it slow. Defense will be as well. That drone just baited Lucius out into getting killed from blue stairs. Nyx is in a pretty rough spot right now. The 1v4. He is still getting droned out as we speak. And, uh, you know, Lycus is, is at a really big advantage here. Most of Top Frag isn't even watching cameras at this point. They are all watching Nyx. Nyx with one frag there. He is going to get knocked down to very low health. Oh my gosh, he's going to get flashed too. Oh, didn't hit. And there goes Barry. He's going to get that final shot off on Nyx to finish the round out. The 4v1, Nyx did not come through. Salt, what are your thoughts on that round? Oh. Uh, it, it's it's tough when uh, it gets converted to the 4v2 like that. And that, and that's kind of why when you're in those 3v, 3vxs, refragging with teammates is the most important thing you can do because it stops that spiral effect. Because once they get that first pick and you have that 4v2, then it's isolated the next, which is exactly what they did, baiting with the drone. Bait the guy out, force him to expose himself, get the pick for it, and then you have 4v1 on site. Um, that, that's, a, that's a good methodical close of of that site uh that also kind of happens when you lose those two opks uh opening deaths like that you lose the vigil to an initial pick um i believe from big window and then the mozzie gets the trade on the ash from mist drones but then the the, the uh cutoff position is what saves that round for him the ayana on the cutoff position is probably what saved them from winning that round for Lycus. Absolutely. Top Frog calls the timeout there. They are going to be finished. They're probably talking about how they are down in rounds right now and what they need to do to fix um, obviously their losses here. They are losing a lot to stalls on defense and now on attack they're just losing to straight man advantage. Um, Lycus is droning a lot better than they are. They seem a lot more put together. Um, Top Frog's got to figure out their defense here in order to be able to stop Lycus. Um, we can see also on the scoreboard, Nyx was up there 10 and 3, I believe. Russ went from an 18 and 2 game last game to now being 3 and 5. Um, maybe he's getting a bit of performance anxiety, buddy. What are you doing there? Come on, get it together. <laughs> uh, Picking up the same side again. Top frag is going to be hopeful for a different outcome. Um, obviously last round they did get punished quickly lost an opening pick and it was just a spiral from there like you had said earlier um, they need not let that spiral happen again they need to figure out how to shut down that opening pick or have a reverse opening pick get one of their own um, it's obviously risky to do on defense but it can pay off the Azami pick there is a bit awkward is that even allowed? Azami's allowed yeah Zombie's been allowed. We, we haven't seen much of it this game. Um, I think T3's still kind of adjusting to how to use a zombie, especially, specifically for game day, not so much as in scrims. Scrims you're seeing a zombie brought out a lot or you're seeing it banned a lot. Um, but a zombie's really good for this. This is a really good adaptation. I, I, I really like this adaptation, actually. Bringing Warden. Um, I, I don't know about Warden, but Warden might be good because you know this flash burn is going to happen for blue. Uh, that's why I see Warden working out for this, and Azami actually I see working out really well as well. These, these are actually two really good adaptations. Absolutely, and, and adaptations are the key to playing this game. Obviously, you need to be able to adapt to whatever the attackers are throwing at you. I think the Azami's a great pick. Um, with the Warden, I'm wondering if he's going to play aggressive on the flash burn, because they're going to send just enough flashes for it to not get burned. But if Warden plays aggressive on a third or a fourth flash, and it doesn't even matter. Warden's gone already. Ayana just with the opening pick there, they lose Blue Stairs control so early. All because we're just playing out of position. We're playing out of position, we're playing for these, you know, a drone frag essentially. There's no point in doing that. And there's another 
another frag there on the Azami. Essentially, all of the upstairs control is gone now. All from one window. That should something... not be happening. Go ahead, I think, something to... I think something to note is Top Frag is a very aggressive team, and clear than that attack timeout, whether it was them deciding it or a coach, that there was a, dis there was a decision that was made that was to play more, def more utility forward. <laughs> and as a team that likes to play aggressive, I think that's a bad call because you're gonna lead to people like example the warden taking random swings and throwing man count down the drain. And if they're gonna wanna continue to play that aggression style, I think something they should focus on more is they need to after the role is done, they need to be leaving at a at a man advantage or even man count compared to how they did the round before, where it was just they left and it was they had a disadvantage and it fumbled really quickly to them. Absolutely, and we can see here that Yana did pick up two more picks during that analysis, uh, with a one refrag going back. I'm sorry, two. The Habana and the Yana are both dead. Lucius isn't in a great spot right now in the 1v3, but I have seen worse. He is going to swing on the guy on blue stairs. Did down him. He knows that if he gets that kill, he's going to put the other team in a spot where they have to figure out to either push or plant. Um, they do have the diffuser. Twitch is going to be planting right now. I don't think smoke hears him close. Um, we do have to see, obviously, that play there in the back in the bar is good. But where is Smoke going to go? He's just in a bad spot right now. He's got to figure out how to either get a pick or find the right spot. And he's just going to get picked. Um, you know, the G36 with a 1X. I'm sorry, a 1.5 is going to be a lot better than some SMG11 with a hollow. That's going to finish out the round. Another loss on defense for Top Frag. You were saying earlier, Assault, this is a, a very attacker-sided map. Um... I couldn't agree with you more at this point. What do you think about that last round? I, I think that's uh, taking an attack timeout too early. The, it feels like they took attack timeout just to be able to win that one site, and then they still didn't win that site. But even if they won that site, you now have nothing to stop momentum. Because now we're seeing two back-to-back -back rounds from Lycus, and there's nothing now that stops any type of momentum unless Lycus, for some odd reason, decide, oh, let's take a timeout as well, which is just not happening as long as they're still winning rounds. Yeah, absolutely. Sly Wolf, anything to add? Not really. I think what uh, Salt is saying is pretty accurate. It's a very attacker-sided map, and this map will favor the team who plays the better attacks, and so far it's showing. Absolutely. We can see an Oryx pickup here by Russ. Obviously, he's going four and six right now. Not the best, but we have, um, you know, it could be a lot worse. I think the Oryx pick is a bit odd, but also could work out very uh, well in their favor. Obviously, as a very aggressive defensive team, their goal here is to get picks early and run with them, kind of the same way that they played their attack. We're hoping that the Orcs is going to work out for them. At least I am. I guess I am biased, but that's all for me. Um, <laughs> looks like a library push here. Maybe a bit of everywhere. We're going to see they do... Lycus loves the drone here, um, which is great. They like to figure out where their attack is. They like to be very coordinated. Although, putting the diffuser by himself out there on solar window might not be the best of uh, choices. Well, it looks like he's not going to go solar window. What's your goal here, Thermite? You look like a wiggle worm. <laughs> oh, I knew it. The rumor. Bias casters. You hear it all the time, but exposed. I think, that, I think that's what we learned right. today. Bias caster, what can I say? <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover both teams best I can, but all I know is that, you know... Oh my gosh, the pick there by Ginga. Wow. What a pick up early. Did they just Ginga. use a thermite charge for the big window? Um, I don't want to know, actually. Because <laughs> thermite's missing a charge and no wall is open. Thermite is indeed missing a charge and open. there is a castle Does there. Okay, open? John. Aruni is down there. They have played the basement room on both sides now. What is Aruni going to do here? Looks like Russ is going to take a bit of damage there. He has to figure out how to get a pick here. Obviously, with Ginga down, it is a 4v4. Um, getting hit again, he is going to be down to 1 HP. If, his t if Lycus is not calling one shot, one shot right now, I am going to be mad. Russ comes around with the quick peek, is going to pick up a frag, is going to pick up a second frag on Panday. He's got to continue with the momentum. He's going to pick up the frag onto Yana now. That is a quad kill. Nyx finishing out the round. Pistol whips him, and wow. Russ on one HP finds two more frags to top out for a 4K, winning that round. What can you say 
the team name says it all top frag if they aren't fragging they aren't winning <laughs> that's a good one actually i like that one uh the only thing i have to say is i is the questionable uh thermite call on on big window you know i have to say i think that threw it i think that threw the round i think uh, i um, think thermite thermiting charging the uh the castle bear kid i think that threw the round Maybe it was a maybe it was a mental thing. Maybe it was like we're we're so good we're gonna we're so good on our attacks we're gonna use a thermite charge on the window. Maybe that's what it was a mental game. But then they but then they prioritized the top floor wall, not the site wall, and then proceeded to follow it up with a lack of droning and relying on walking in and winning gunfights. That's very true. Actually. Winning gunfights is big for top frag right now. Um, let's see. This round coming out. They brought the Oryx out again. Obviously, Russ loved it last round. He loved that T5. He did not really use Oryx's ability as much as I would have expected him to. Uh, jumping up and down hatches is big for Oryx, big for flanking, um, but it obviously does make a lot of noise, so it's it's definitely not the safest option. Lycus out here. We are coming out on to round 10. Lycus has the one round advantage so far. 5-4. Very close game. Uh, the first game, obviously, and the second game, neither of which were very close. We just have to see what they're going to do about this at this point. I can't imagine that they have much else to do except continue to play the way that they are. Russ starts with another opening pick there onto the sledge. That's just the way that you got to play it. Russ here, obviously you got the 1.5 on the T5 SMG, one of the best SMGs in the game, has been since it came out. I mean, you get an opening pick, you gotta run with it now. They have to play <laughs> oh, the stall here it. instead of playing so aggressive. He's teabagging in the window. What a guy. Wow. What are they gonna do now? Obviously playing uh, a little less aggressive. Lycus has to figure out what they're gonna do. Missing a sledge is big. Russ with another pick. Onto the thermite. Come on, Russ. You can't keep doing this. You started out the game three and five, and you're going to turn it around now. You just dropped another seven kills in the span of only a couple of rounds and died once. The Azami there, that is a good angle. I actually really like that angle. I'm going to take that into ranked myself. I'm going to show the Silvers what is up. They are not going to believe it when they die to that. Uh, I, this is just a complete stall at this point. There's not. No hard breach. Your main entry's gone. You're just kind of looking for anything that they're going to give you. Good Absolutely. patience play. There's, there's no point in them playing aggressive here, and I think it's great uh, that they are not playing aggressive. The Yana is going to come out. I'm sorry. The Nomad is going to get a pick there. Um, definitely good to get that Vigil out of there. Russ still being a threat, though. There isn't much that you're going to be able to do against that T5. If he finds your head, you are gone. A good one way here. It's not going to play out in Nyx's favor, though. He is going to get a couple of shots off there on the Ash. It's not going to matter, though. Which will get that frag. They are evened out now. Man count is 3-3. Three, three. Let's see what they run with here. Getting a few more shots off on the Ash. Um, you know, they're playing sight. They only have 35 seconds remaining in the round. They, The attackers are not playing together. They're playing three separate angles right now. Um, you know, part of that is good, but it also means that they are not going to be able to refrag the same way that they would if they were playing together. Um, going down to the final 20 seconds here, one person in blue hall. He is going to get shot from this very small angle from Sapuku. The last two are coming in through the garage. Sapuku is looking for that pick there. He sees the guy by the trash can, sees the guy out in the garage, and the defenders are going to win out that round. A couple of picks from each player, each team, and they're just going to take that round. That evens it out now. They're coming into this game now 5-5, coming into round 11. Let's see which team's going to pull ahead. I, I think Russ just played a really fun game of just peek him. And that, that sounds exactly like Top Frag's motto is just peek him and uh, see what happens. Uh, gets the opening pick and then gets a secondary pick on that. Creates the 5v3. Get a couple of trades down and then they go for a... Not they get it down to a 3v3 then, but at that point they don't have the utility to clear out the rest of it. It's a really good part about Azami is if you're able to maintain the Azami really late round, 
after it's already a 3v3 for Chalet, that's that's actually what you want for defense right there. That's kind of the best you can do on defense, is get the 3v3 and mo hope that the utility is a little bit less than favorable for him. Absolutely. And they're picking the bar set again. Uh, didn't work out for them in the first round. I believe they did win it the second round. Um, I actually do not remember, but I do know that they are going to have to figure out how to play this site. If they want to win, they need to get two rounds in here. Um, they got to pull it together against Lycus. They did pull together the last two rounds. Let's see if they can pull together Bar. What are we thinking, Assault? Ten seconds to go. Um, yeah, the, this was, uh, th I believe this was the one where they had the, uh, they took called the TAC-T for. So they called the TAC-T, made the adjustment of the Azami and the Warden. No Warden this time. Um... We'll see if... And no uh, Warden. They did pick up the Oryx, though, again. The Oryx has been working out for them the past rounds. Well, Russ got... Russ promoted himself to Oryx, I think, is what happened. He was like, Warden's not working for me. I'll go to Oryx, and we'll see if we can just start peeking him. Which I is the right so. play for him. I guess so. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? You just gotta keep it going. Oryx is gonna get droned out pretty early there. They are taking a pretty quick trophy push here, it seems like, but I'm not sure if they're gonna push all the way in. Zofia pushing in from basement. Um, it looks like they are gonna try to push up West Main, maybe get a pinch here on the Oryx. Russ is gonna have to kind of just listen. Oh, Zofia he's, just missed he's it. The Aruni here. Sees that she's outside. Oh my gosh. Talk about just looking the wrong way. Nyx is gonna get the pick. That's the fuser down. Hibana Where's the refrag? Downstairs. What is he doing? Sophia just ran away. You're supposed to refrag there, Sophia. What was your goal? Nyx is going to be here. He's probably going to try to make himself a rotate, try to leave. And the, he has the diffuser down. He's got case. He doesn't need to leave. Sophia there on West Main. He understands that there's probably going to be a player playing there. He's going to open up a rotate for himself to be able to get the pick here. Sophia sees him. What a pick. The pixel by Nyx. Oh my gosh. He's playing this perfectly. He knows he has the case. One walking down West Main as well as one walking down those outside stairs. Looks like they're about to pick up the case. They have to just pick it up and run at this point. Shooting through the wall there. I'm not sure if that was the best idea, but running away definitely is. You got the 5v3 man advantage. Keep it. You've already wasted almost two minutes in the round. You've got to just hold bar at this point and not lose the man advantage. That's key. It has been key the whole game, and it will continue to be the key for the rest of it. The wow. What a goal here. You got Nomad and Ayana right outside of those windows right there. He is going to burn the Aruni gate. Still have a player on blue. Instead of the shield, they do have the Azami. What is that even called? The wall? The rock? The, uh... Wayne the Rock Johnson? <laughs> uh, I believe it's called... Is it a gate of some sort? It's like something gate or a Kiba barrier. That's what it is. Kiba barrier. Kiba barrier. That's a word that I have no clue the meaning of, but it doesn't matter. The fragger is coming in. It's Jaeger, though. He's just going to jump in. He's going to get shot from both sides. It doesn't mean a thing. Russ gets the kill. Sapuku finish, finishes out the last two frags. That's a flawless round there by top frag. I mean, you don't get to play bar much better than that. They figured out how to play the Azami better. They ditched the Warden for the Oryx. Um, you know, Russ promoted himself, and it seems to have been working for him. He has figured out how to finally get frags here on Chalet. And now it's up to match point. Sly Wolf, what's going to happen here on match point? Who do you have your money on? If Lycus keeps playing the way they have been, which is comparable to the first map in relative terms, it's been oddly sloppy, and if they don't if they don't turn it around or call a timeout, which seems that they haven't, I feel like things will continue to go downhill and you will see a 2-1 map lead from top right. Absolutely. And I think the other thing is, too, that the momentum from the last map win obviously is in Top Frag's favor. They also have three-round momentum going on right now, which is phenomenal for them. Assault, do you think that they're going to carry the momentum to finish out the match, or do you think Lycus is going to bring this into overtime? Well, Lycus has the timeout still, which is kind of confusing why we're not seeing a timeout used by Lycus. Uh, that, that's kind of what's confusing to me. Like, you're 6-5 you're down. You might lose the map, and and you're not electing for the timeout now. It's kind of it's, it's weird to me. You just lost three rounds in a row. This is kind of when you pull it out. 
and you know, I think that the only kind of reason that overtime. timeout did not get used was because Tabled said in chat that he did have to pee. I think Lycus is going to use this to their advantage. I think he's going to hope that uh, he would be able to get to pee, and now he just doesn't. Um, so he is going to be sitting there in his chair, maybe getting some shivers in. Um, you know, Lycus might be playing that the right way. We're going to see here if they win this round or not. Uh, I don't know. It's confusing to me. It feels like a tactical blunder. But um, they might know some stuff that I don't know. So let's see what happens. Right. Sense okay, coming so out. Sense yeah, coming out is actually really big right now. Sense coming out when you're 6-5 down on map point. This is in the hidden strats archive, clearly. <clears throat> yeah. I agree. I think the sense should have came out earlier if they were planning on using it, but I guess if you're going to bring it out at any point in time, now is better than never. My biggest uh, Maruni, question is, uh, will, the, will the basement of Rooney be droned out again, or will it be avoided? The basement of Rooney, from what I know, has been droned out every time. The Nomad charge is even going to be there early. They're not planning on getting flanked by Rooney at all. Um... The sense is coming in. They they are playing first floor, getting that map control early. It seems, uh, just trying to get stuff off the wall so that thermite can get in. Um, they're gonna open that kitchen wall. Wow, very early. Only about a That's minute fifteen jammer. into the round. Still gets mute jammer though. They are not gonna get the stuff off the wall as early as I thought, meaning that they are not gonna be able to get their push on as early as we thought. Two of Rooney gates on there as well. Seems like they are pushing for heavy utility denial through this wall which they are definitely getting a lot of utility burn. Um, a lot of flashbangs are gone here by the attack. Thermite has zero flashes left. We have no more frags on the Finca. Just flashes, claymores, and the small hard breach charges that Sense brings. Um, no picks yet, not even a bit of damage, and we're almost two minutes into the round. Do you think that they continue this push? Do you think that Lycus maybe chooses to do something differently? What's the goal here? Assault? I think right now they're trying to figure that out. They're, they're stalling right now. They're they're trying to debate like what's the game plan? What 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 can we do? What can we accomplish? Ignoring the top floor is is uh, is a little strange. There's no top floor pressure for either of the walls. So whatever they're gonna do seems like it's gonna be a direct execute. And I feel like that's probably why they brought the sense so they could do some type of direct execute. Absolutely. Tabled with the frag though. Supuku with the second frag. It's gonna bring the man advantage into top frag's favor. They're looking good for this match. Even a Finca down at this point. Spooku finishes it off. Spooku with another kill. Oh my god. He is taking this round by storm. Looks like Finga is going to get one kill. Nyx will finish out the round. That is the map. That brings the entirety of this match to 2-1 in top frag's favor. Sly Wolf, what do you think about that match? Um, I think it shows that top frag has the potential to win out the series. Like I said earlier especially with how they're doing really well at punishing like and not only are they playing how they like to play the game which is getting to the 3v3s and playing the 3v3s really aggressively but they're also able to sit there and realize what like is, is doing a lot quicker than they are able to realize it themselves and because of it they're able to punish the other team for any play that they make absolutely they did punish very early on there like was up early and they lost they lost what was it four rounds in a row I mean, if you're not going to be you. trading rounds, it you got to figure out how to at least grab one back and send it into overtime. Uh, I think it was still a great game, though. I think Lycus did great. I think Top Craig just did a little bit better. Assault, anything you have to say on the matter? No, I. I it was a close map overall. Um, the, it's surprising seeing defense win the game. That 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 was kind of a, a really big shock. Was was seeing defense be the dominant factor of this, having a three three split, and then go in and have a uh, a four two close, is uh, is really big actually for for Chalet. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Chalet definitely, like you said, a big attacker sided map. Um, you got to figure out how to attack on an attacker sided map. Otherwise, you're just not going to be doing great. Looks like Clubhouse is going to be the final map here. We're going to send it into an intermission, and we will be back when the match starts.
go. All right, we are going to be heading into map four. We do have top frag up two one here for the maps. Um, obviously, fragging was a big for them. I believe Nyx dropped 15 and I want to say Russ dropped 13. Um, some big kill games for the two of them are playing hand in hand. They have been friends for the longest time. Um, top frag coming out with the Habana ban. Uh, if I don't rem if I remember correctly, Habana was actually working in their favor picking up kills. Lucius was picking up a lot of frags last game on Hibana, but maybe they just don't like it here on Clubhouse. Definitely a good ban by them. Lycus coming out with the Maverick ban. That is kind of expected. Obviously, top floor is absolutely nothing if the wall gets Mav tricked. Let's see what the defense bans pull out here. You know, I would not be surprised to see another Valkyrie ban on this map. Uh, just depends whether Lycus bans it or top frag does. The Azami ban, Lycus obviously did not like what top frag was doing with zombie last map um we just gotta hope that top frag uh, can continue with their playing style uh, if you will they are playing quite aggressively and it has been working out in their favor for the most part there's the valkyrie band kind of like i expected top frag has not liked valkyrie as much as they play aggressive they obviously just don't want the intel um we're going in here, like I said, map four. What do we have to say about this one? Assault? The bands feel very uh, defensive-sided, actually. Um, and, and, and Which is kind of good because the meta's kind of been attacking-sided for a while. Um, so having defensive-sided bands is, is actually kind of good, I feel. Uh, I feel like we, we have a more likelihood of seeing like a 4-2 split first half. Um, I'm actually kind of excited to watch this to two like quote unquote hard breaches if you want to put Mav in the hard breach category uh, it's it's gonna create I think uh, a lot more on the uh, it should create a lot more defensive side of play I would agree Sly Wolf anything to say not really my biggest concern I get not really concerned but just curiosity is Typically when Thatcher's up, most teams do bring him, but the bigger thing I've noticed when teams do that is they bring him, but they don't use him to his full potential. They more or less bring him because in more in fear of that he's actually just on the board. I'm curious if Lycus will be able to actually capitalize on Thatcher and bring him to full potential, or if he's going to be just kind of used as a wonder pick because he's so Five seconds to go. Yeah. Um... Lycus definitely does have a lot of opportunities here, bringing the Thatcher with him. Uh, Thatcher is a very good operator. Unfortunately, a lot of teams do not so use him to his full potential, like you said. Um, you know, Thatcher is useful for a lot more than simply wall denial, denial, if you will. Uh, an early pick by Ginga. He's going to take out Russ. Russ is spawn peeking like a dummy. Just a bad start, uh, but obviously it is the very, very start of the game, so... I guess it doesn't really mean much in, in that shit. What did he say? Spin that back next round. Oh, Russ. he's already Russ talking about wants all of these smoke. All of it. Oh. Obviously, top frag. Blood battle. <laughs> well, that's about to be a bloodbath. Uh, this is about to be some Clash Royale level stuff going on. If I'm not mistaken, Russ is actually probably playing Clash Royale in between these rounds while he's dead. If he gets spawn peak like that, what else do you have to do at that point? I mean, he's, he's AFK on cams, so maybe he's using his phone as not only listen to cams, but he's got he's to get his elo in time for real for sure. Absolutely. Uh, obviously, Top Frag not in a great spot right now. They did lose their vigil very early on, uh, playing here at a man disadvantage rather than a man advantage like they have been for a lot of these rounds. Um, looks like Lycus does want to get this hatch open early. Kitchen hatch is a very um, good hatch to get open, but can also be very risky. C4s are a big thing to think about when opening kitchen hatch. Um, and the other thing is, too, that kitchen hatch is almost a liability sometimes. Uh, because if you do drop on site and do not clear all the roamers, kitchen hatch can deny a lot of plants um, as a defensive uh, almost advantage there. Well, Maya is going to be playing the holes that Buck is opening up. He's looking for a pick here. Buck obviously brought for verticality. Um, I'm surprised that the sledge wasn't played here. Buck is a good player, um, a good operator. The hard breach chargers are likely why he was picked over sledge, but I'm not sure what he used him on. Um, 
Any idea there? Uh, blue hatch and uh, bar. You wanted blue oh, hatch and you wanted bar. Um, and then Thermite used true. used his uh, here. My, my question, it's more so, uh, this is like kind of like a tactical blunder. Oh my gosh. See, and that's oh that's gosh. why you create the vertical in, in kitchen that wasn't created earlier. That, that vertical should have been used and abused a lot earlier. Absolutely, and I don't mean to cut you off, but Smoke is making a play here on to Barry. There goes their Thatcher, but it is now coming down to a 1v3. Thermite is planting the bomb. Buck still upstairs. Finca playing there as well. Um, they have the positioning advantage here. Buck is watching for the flank. Thermite is going to almost peek his head out, but just not quite. This is a bad play by him. He's going to get seen by the Buck, and Lucius will go down. Lycus is going to take round one here on Clubhouse. Let's just hope that we don't see any common mistakes like that again. Obviously, he knew that they were playing vertical. He just had to figure out where to push from. Not much you could do there in a 1v3, but a good try nonetheless. The, uh... I think something to look forward to for the next round is... I don't know if you guys caught it there, but right before Thatcher got swung on, he had all three Thatchers in pocket, and at the last second, he just threw them down the hallway. His utility was not used at all during that entire round, and yet they're bringing him again simply because, like I said, he's on the board, and most teams do that. Absolutely, they are going to bring the Thatcher again. You know, Thatcher has such a great gun, um, not to mention some of the best utility in the game. He's he's banned so much in ranked. I almost fear that these comp teams have no clue what his actual usefulness is because he's banned so much. Um, you know, as it is, Thatcher's nearly never on the board, so having him on the board here on Clubhouse is pretty big. Obviously, the Havana and Maverick bans, in my eyes, are more important. Um, I think that one of the biggest things that they have to worry about here. Um, for top frag's sake is getting rid of the verticality that killed them so much before um you know taking a, a top four roam would be a good idea here i think that they're almost missing out you know bringing the alibi i think they should bring an orx instead nyx is going to get a few shots off there um basically just trading a, a couple bits of damage there nothing crazy we're going to see what their goal is here top frag has been playing very aggressive for a majority of these maps um they continue to do so here as well but i think this malusi is going to be one of their biggest advantages they just have to play it right you know Sapuku on the roam as long as he doesn't make too much noise and doesn't make his presence known he's got a lot of advantages here aruni playing upstairs as well um bringing the dmr lucius is a great idea but gonna get into a gunfight there Sledge and Aruni. Sledge knows that he does not have an advantage here in this gunfight. It is a 2v1. He did see both of the shots coming off. Um, he is going to get a drone here by Thatcher. The drone here could be a big advantage. Thatcher looks like he's even going to drop. If he drops, it's a 2v2. It evens it out. If they even play for trades here, they may win it out in the end. Lucius and Sapuku backing off a bit. They are going to see that there is a person in cash. Are they going to swing out here? He absolutely is. Ginga is going to get fallen. He's even going to get some damage off there on the sledge, but it looks like it doesn't matter. One frag for Lycus turns into two frags, all because Sapuku couldn't shoot straight. Wow. What's the play here now? You have the man advantage. You just have to continue on. Oh my gosh, Russ with the C4. Sledge stood no chance at this point. Should have brought the buck. What were these guys thinking? The zero pick here is odd, but I guess it works, doesn't it? Oh, this actually, that, that was almost a failed cam, but that actually ended up being, like, actually a perfect cam. I would agree that cam there is a, definitely a great idea. The third right charge is going down. They are going to open that hatch. Um, some good positioning here by by top right, actually. I don't think that anybody's in dirt, and I don't think that the, uh, that Lycus has been playing dirt very often. Um, I'm almost wondering if dirt would be the biggest handicap here to top frag. Zero is now slowly pushing in. Some shots going off onto Thatcher. Russ with a the frag there. Another frag by Nyx. This turns it into a 3v1. 
Barry is running for his life. I would too. I would be terrified. 20 seconds left in the round. What will he do? Looks like he may save the KD here. Um, I wouldn't blame him. Nope, he's going to run in. What is he going to do here? 10 seconds left in the round. Is he hoping to get a frag here on Russ? Show him who is the boss. Oh my gosh, the gunfight here. And he's going to die. Nyx finishes out that round. And that is going to even it up. 1-1. One, one. Nyx in the chat already. This has been big for them. That, so that what true, are we thinking of the chats? That the chats is is how we know we're at T three. This is this is bread and butter T three we're seeing. Okay, this the the crap talking is is how we know that we are about to see a bloodbath. Which is exactly what I thought Clubhouse would be because it's a little bit more structured, but the teams tend to play it because it's more structured. They actually tend to play it more sloppy, so you see like a little bit like more on the mistake side of things, which then creates like really funny moments. Which is why I love seeing Clubhouse being brought out actually right now. It, it actually makes it a lot more fun to watch in, in in different ways than most like skyscraper chalet like the maps we've been seeing. We didn't get to see Oregon, unfortunately, but seeing the skyscraper and then the chalet, you're seeing really fast pace, attack heavy maps. But now with Clubhouse, you're seeing a little bit more structure brought to things, which uh, creates a different line. Um, but as far as like it goes for the Thatcher pick, I think it's kind of useless for him right now. They, I, I feel like he should be switching off to something else, just like another fragger or like something with different utility because they're not utilizing it. Absolutely, I would agree. And Assault, I bet you didn't know, but I, myself, was a T7 demon back in the day. <laughs> I know how these trenches work. Oh, yeah. And I know that these guys are going to continue to play aggressive, continue to play the man advantage, and do exactly what they need to do to win out against Lycus. Fun fact for everybody on the stream, okay? Nyx, his very first season that he was a diamond, he achieved it with a 0.7 KD, and I still make fun of him to this day. That sounds like my gameplay. We are going to see an early pick there on the table. Looks like they are going to lose the man advantage that I just told them that was so impo like, important. They're just going to lose it right away. But what can you do? They are pushing through quickly into cash, into green. They are going to take the man, I'm sorry, not the man, the map advantage very early. Taking the map control is definitely going to be big for them. They obviously have the pick to start. They have to continue with the momentum that they have or slow it down and continue to drone. We do have Lucius setting up for a C4 here. A lot of people in cash. Um, that window is opened up. There's going to be a lot of long angles here. Jaeger just needs to get this pick. Come on, somebody get a headshot there. There's no way that they're going to get out of that with no picks. Gengo is going to throw a Finca boost in there. He's going to have to peek around this corner and fight what looks to be the Frost, I believe. Nope, a nade's going to come out instead. Not a bad idea at all. Nyx did hear it, though, and did back off. Sledge did take it. Sledge is going to get a frag onto Nyx in the corner. Lucius will get a different frag onto Thrave. Sledge is going to get another frag there onto Lucius to get the refrag in. Sapuku gets a frag. Ginka gets a refrag. It's a 1v3 now. Top frag. Russ is left. Can he clutch out the 1v3? He's got three different people in three different spots right here. He's going to down the Sledge. He knows that well, there's one planting right now. That's a rough spot to be planted in. Player on the bed. Will he see him? He definitely does, but he cannot get the frag. Very unfortunate. A good try there by Rush. Lycus is going to figure out how to finish off that attack and win the round. What a great round. Let's pass it off to Sly Wolf. What do you have to say? Um, this isn't really more of an analysis point. This is more just pointing out the facts. Table, <laughs> every time he gets the entry pick, goes straight into all chat as the menace he is. Um, and he continuously harasses Lycus for going for over wild burying peaks and throwing away 50-50s. But then every time we see Table picked as first pick, that's exactly what he does, and it's kind of funny to see, given he's the same guy to make fun of Lankus for doing the same thing. Absolutely. Tabled is, in fact, actually a T8 demon. I don't know if you can do that. <laughs> um, currently 0-2 right now. Dude. Obviously, he has a lot to be desired here in this match. He was playing okay the last couple of games, but is not pulling it together yet in the three rounds that we played. 
a lot of match left to be played, so hopefully Tabled can turn it around. Um, Did you say frag... Tabled is that guy? Tabled, unfortunately, at the moment is not that guy. <laughs> you know, you know, sometimes the T8 de the T8 demons can come in and and play T3 and be wonderful. And sometimes the T8 demons can can come into T3 and not play the same. They play far too aggressive. I think Table currently is playing far too aggressive compared to the rest of his team. I think he's making his team, um, you know, be at a disadvantage a lot of the times because he's, you know, if he gets picked early, then he's gonna put their team at a 4v5. If he gets a pick early, it's great. But I think his opening pick percentage right now is lower than half. The bandit trick will come out. What's he gonna do here? And gets he the bandit gets trick off and doesn't even get nated. Nix is just gonna run out of there. He's got the diamond charm on. Don't forget, he probably had a point eight when he got this charm. What will he do now? He just runs away. Not a bad idea. One thermite charge down. The second charge did open up the cash wall. They will be taking CCTV right now. If you guys get into cash, you will have map advantage, but there is not much when it comes to hard breach utility to get this wall open. Ace is there, but he doesn't look like he's playing very close. What do you think the goal of Ace is here? Nyx is going to run out and get a kill. Oh my gosh. You better go get the refrag, Finka. What were you thinking? He's just going to watch his teammate get killed. They're going to continue to push into CC. There's a little flank coming up here. Of course it's Russ, the little sneaky boy. What is he gonna do? He knows that they're all playing out there on the balcony. CC and Cash. Well, I shouldn't say he knows, but I guess I do. Makes me an alt knower, right? Oh my gosh, another run out. It's not gonna work out for Seppuku. And Nyx is also down. That brings him, oh my gosh, table with the refrag on the Panday. He's gonna pick up Nyx. That's gonna leave them in a 4v3. Almost a 3v3 with how low Nyx is. That's going to get him another One's kill, Nyx. With the Nitro, Russ with the kill. They're going to finish out this round. Russ is going to finish him off. The flank worked exactly to their advantage. Russ was doing great there, playing very patient. Nyx got up and threw an absolute Kobe of a Nitro. That's, uh, it's interesting considering they almost threw that round, too. The the, the, the jump out almost hurt him. Uh, it almost did. They got they got one pick from the jump out. They thought you know since we got one pick, they might as well get the second pick, and they went for a second pick. Um, but this is uh that that's it's interesting. They're not going to a third site. They go they went basement twice. They went uh, uh not CC. They went master twice, and now they're going back to basement. So no third site. Is an interesting one to me, which tells me either they don't like their, they don't like CC, they don't like Bar, or they don't have as much experience playing this map as they want. I think unfortunately they just don't have enough experience as a team to pull together. Um, you know, CC is a very big uh, team-oriented site. Unfortunately, there's a lot to be desired there when it comes to the team. The team, obviously, you can see just by the names. Uh, <laughs> these guys do not play together more often than just ranked. Nyx is a ranked demon. Russ is a ranked demon turned into a comp player. Um, I haven't seen Seppuku's name in years. I think he is old. I think he has gray hairs. Yes. Seppuku is definitely like a 35 year old name, but hey man, if it works out for them, it works out for them. Absolutely, this man's growing old. I don't even want to know what his hairline looks like. If you're watching the VOD, Seppuku, please send a hairline pic. Uh, we'd love to show it on stream. Um, and I actually don't even know Lucius. No no ego here. Just I don't know him. He's obviously a great player. Getting some picks for him. But this team was not something that was planned. This got put together very quickly. And Lucius is going to get picked after I just called him a good player. If you couldn't tell, I am face palming right now. That's I can't tell if that's karma or or whatever it is, but I call him the a good caster's player curse. and he's gone. The caster's curse. The caster's curse. It's like the Madden curse, but even worse. Looks oh. like we are gonna get a pick on to Buck here. Russ's position is given away. He will take out the drone and he's gonna even out the man count. He is gonna get pushed from a couple different angles now. He has to either find a way out or find a second pick. He's gonna drop down into bar. He is gonna get out of that. Getting out of that alive?
Wow. I would never have imagined that. Thermite will use one of his charges. I'm actually not too sure what he's using the charge on, but it's obviously something smart. It's nothing that I would know about, that's for sure. Let's see. Dirt is open. They did bring that second hard breacher with Ace. Um, sometimes I forget how many hard breachers are in the game. Maybe that makes me old. I'm not sure. There's another pick by Ginga. He is going to make it another man count higher with Lycus. Sapuku hiding in the corner. <laughs> wow. Wow. Talk about a bottom feeder. This man was laying on the floor for more than a little while, but he does get the pick there onto the Finca. They are going to continue on. Russ with another flank. He's been doing it all game. He'll continue to do it again. As long as they don't hear him, then he has a lot to do here. There's two picks, maybe a third here, getting ready. All three of them upstairs. He hears the buck. Here's him going down main. He's probably making that call. If he pushes out too early, it's going to be bad for him. He's going to get the frag onto the Thatcher. He has to continue on with the momentum. He hears that the Thermite just dropped. He's going to get, hopefully, that pick right there. Yes, he will. The Ace is going to come back up the stairs, and it's not going to matter. Russ will finish out the round. A nice 3K there. He's going to win the round for the team. I think without him, that's just going to be, a, a, you know, a game of trades. And if, if Top Frag loses that, they're going to be screaming at Russ for the rest of his life. And as we can see from chat, we just found out Russ is that guy. Russ is definitely that guy. Um, once again, table, not that guy. I think the biggest issue that's making Lycus lose a lot of their attacks <clears throat> is, one, they continue to bring Thatcher and he's never used, but on a larger note that has lost them the other maps as well, is a heavy lack of a drone economy. Absolutely. Lycus has not been droning the same that they have before. Um, and if they have, it's it, their drones have just been getting shot. They're not playing the drones the same. They're not playing them very safely. They're playing a lot of visual and not a lot of audio. Audio is huge in the game, as many people know. As unreliable as it can be, audio is one of the biggest helps that you can have as a droner. If you come in and hear some audio, you can wait for your player to get in position, find a visual, and get the pick instead of just running your drones in sight and getting them shot early. Third sight, they're, they're actually having to go to a third sight now because of uh, of their sight rotation. So their final sure defense are. is spent on their last sight. Absolutely, they could find themselves in a tied match same way that they had at Shelley, but they could find themselves in an advantage here. We have to see what Top Frag can put together for their final defense here. They obviously don't like this sight, I wonder if they have a plan for it. it. Seems like a pretty, just natural, pretty self-explanatory defense. This this gets played all the time. Um, if Lycus doesn't figure out how to play against this, then I guess that's on them. Sledge so coming out with the early pick there on the Malusi. I guess that's just how it is. Sapuku is now the opening pick instead of Tabled. They got to be getting on his head about that one. Um, he's going to be rotating through the cams. That's good for him. He needs to be giving calls to his teammate if he's not alive. Um, Lycus starts off this round at an early advantage. What are they going to do with it? Assault, what's your thoughts? I, I think now you just kind of do a standard take. You got the OPK, so now you're just going for cash wall. You're going to open up cash wall. You're going to clear clear whoever plays uh, green box or close on you. Um, and, and then you can go for your side execute based off around that. Absolutely, and I think if Lycus continues to play, um, you know, the drones the same way that they have before, that they're going to be in a bad spot. But if they play better uh, droning than they are right now, I think that they might be looking at a better advantage here. Jaeger is sitting in a bit of an odd corner that he has a tabled thing to do. If Jaeger can take advantage of this, he should have swung there, I think. But he just chose not to. He is going to continue to conceal his position. It's definitely a great idea. Um, you know, if they continue oh, the turn around there, Jaeger is just going to continue to conceal his position. If he doesn't swing soon, he gives up the position, does not get a frag. Nick will get the frag on Pande, though. That's a good even man count now. 4-4. Four, four. My pizza is giving me acid reflux. This is not going good. Thrave is going to get two kills there. 
the Fumai and he doesn't see him. He doesn't see him. Both oh. gone. Doesn't see the pick there. That is really unfortunate. Thrave did get a nice two kills there. I think that this could be a really good great advantage for them what are they going to do with this round four two man advantage they have to continue on continue droning don't get aggressive there's another frag there it's a 1v4 make that a 1v3 he's going to try to shotgun snipe the finca and it will not work out that, that that's a good close out of a of a 5v4 just played it slow methodical opened up the walls took their time with it that that's that's some good textbook playing right there Went underneath to clear people out from default spots underneath. That that's just good methodical siege. That that's kind of what you like to see from those. Absolutely, the uh, the drones there were great methodical, like you said. They continued to play the round slow instead of being aggressive, and it worked out in their favor. Sly Wolf, anything you have to say? Not really. It was a rough round from Top Frag. They <clears throat> went through for some pretty brave solo plays and got punished for it. I think that's something Lycan is good at is punishing brave solo plays, but I don't know, I wasn't it wasn't such a proving round to, to show me that Lycus has what it takes to bring this map to the But I mean it's just getting started, but I mean looking back to the other maps, Lycus hasn't been doing the best on defense. So we'll have to see how it goes. Different different thing to note about uh Lycus's defense versus um Top frags defense just off rip, uh, bringing a wall denial of, that's electric um, for their CC hold, having a bandit instead of. Uh, I, I don't. I don't even think they had a mute for the other one. I can't remember though. They might have. They might have not. Uh, but that's just that. That's a key difference um, to understand. Well, my playing rafters as normal. Uh, this seems pretty default in in what they want to do, but sometimes it's actually kind of good. If you know how to play it. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, he's just taking a sip of my Bang Energy. Sorry if we're sponsored oh, by somebody sponsor else. Oh, sponsor drop? Wow, that's tough, man. Sponsored by, uh, I wish I was sponsored by Bang Energy. Currently drinking the Wild and Watermelon. This thing is bussin'. We do have the Thatcher play coming back out. He is going to get bandit trick anyways. That's one ace charge down. Or was that two? I wasn't looking very closely. Two. That's all ace charges down. Don't mind me. Right I'm a little wow. slow. Uh, they have no other hard breach, actually. It is actually just the ace, and they've already ruined it. They're not looking good for this round to start. Unless they take garage or they take from the opposite sides, they don't have much to do here. An early pick from the smoke is going to get thermite down and dead. They are going to try for the refrag, but they can't get it. And that's all the hard breach on the board too. Absolutely, all of the hard breach is gone now. There is nothing that they're going to be able to do about any walls here. It's basically just a straight game of picks. Another down there on the smoke. Tabled will finish out the kill. A nitro will come out to trade Tabled. That is going to make the man advantage back in Lycus' favor. 4-3 will continue the match. Let's see what they're going to do here. Definitely looking to maybe run in. Um, there's there's a lot of stuff in the way here, though. they got, they got to get one more pick. They have to at least even it out. A nade coming in from below. Almost blew himself up. Russ would have never heard the end of that if he did. They're going to open up some verticality here. A buck would have maybe been good, but I guess they weren't expecting to have all of their hard breach bandit trip. There's going to be a Jaeger down below. He messes up the flank. He's going to die. Russ will get traded out. Another trade from Nyx on the Pande brings it into 2v2, 2v1. Defenders are going to win. Brave gets the kill while getting down. What a close call. What a great round. Lycus pulls it together. They are now leading the match 4-3. Uh, a big thing to note about when you when you play clubhouse and you're a team with lack of experience, defense is a lot easier to scrape by on, which I think is why we saw the 3-3 split um, from top frag. But when you come to attack on a map that you don't have a lot of experience on, that's when a lot of the cracks will start to show 
uh, when it comes to competitive environments. So I wouldn't be surprised if we started to see a spiral from Top Frag if they have a lack of experience playing this map as an attack side because they're not used to dealing with as many problems as you see on Clubhouse um, as a team. So they don't know how to deal with all the problems as a team that they're going to see. Yeah, absolutely. Coming into round eight here, um, we can see that on, you know, Top Frag side, Russ is holding it down with 10 frags right now. Um, that's pretty much it though. The rest of their team hasn't done too much when it comes to the fragging capabilities. Um, Russ actually just told me that it was time for him to drop 20. I am going to hold that against him. If he does not drop 20, I am going to take his account and there's nothing that he can do about it. So, uh... So are you going to say that if Russ doesn't get 20 and that they lose the map that you're taking away the title? Of Russ is no longer that guy. Correct. I did say that Russ was that guy. Uh, if they don't, if they don't win and he doesn't drop twenty, uh, he's no longer that guy. So then who would that guy be? Uh, nobody on their team. The opening pick is going to go to Top Frag, though. They will take out the Malusi early. Umai has taken a lot of damage as well. They're hoping for another pick here. If they can make it a five v three, they do have a lot of advantage here on basement. Basement does definitely benefit a lot from a high man count so taking the opening pick away from uh Lycus here was great we can Attack see that Barry is roaming up on top floor I think that he might have a good um you know opportunity here to make a dent in the attackers and Pandey will come out with a nitro to do exactly the dent that I was just talking about there's a pick by Nyx though he is gonna take Ginga out that goes the Wamai just leaving them with a Mira, Cade, and a Jaeger left for Lycus. They did take out that Thermite Charge, though. Oh, I'm sorry. They didn't even place down a Thermite Charge. Why have they not opened the hatch It's a hard bridge yet? gadget. Come on. In the Cade trick. Better open this hatch soon. There goes oh, the Thermite Charge. Place it directly on there. You are a bozo right now, Gino. What were you thinking? Russ gets another pick that is going to make it a 3v2. Jaeger's going to get a pick to make it a... Now it's a 3v1. Nyx just wanted the pick anyways. He's going to get the refrag. Last guy is in dirt. I'm sorry, last guy is hiding behind a crate. He's going to get fragged out by Russ. And that's going to end the round, tying it right back up 4-4. Four, four. That, uh, that worked out well. Um, I was surprised. Uh, I think... I think Lycus is giving away unnecessary picks when they don't need to. I think if they actually stick to structured form, they're going to be winning a lot more defenses. I mean, you saw it with, like, the Cade trick last round. Like, that worked, and they got a charge out of it. The Bandit trick to get rid of the ace charges. If they stick to, like, the standard things, because Top Frag is not used to dealing with the standard things as a team. They don't know what to be looking for right now. Um, and they don't know how to deal with their standard problems. Lycus just needs to play standard right now, and they'll win. Like, they can win if they just play normally. Which sounds weird, but... Because Lycus is really swing-heavy. But I think for this map, this would be a good map to just, like, play the game normally for a bit. And see what goes on. Absolutely. I think that Top Rug here is playing a little bit against the grain. They're not playing very normal. They're playing very aggressive. If Lycus could punish them for that... They would definitely be in a much better spot than they are right now. Obviously, they are tied, but um, they were tied last map for a long time, and it did not work out well for Lycus. Um, Nyx, we just saw a couple, you know, maybe about a minute ago, was in all chat. As per usual, pretty much the entirety of Top Frag, besides Gino and Russ, are always in all chat. Gotta love it. You gotta get in the other team's head somehow, and... Uh, you know, if they do that, they continue to play the way that they are. We just got to rock out. Lucius will take some damage early there, but he is going to continue to push into stock. Looks like he is going to play from underneath. Most of their team will be playing from below. Russ with an early nade pick there onto the Jaeger. Once again, what an ironic nade pick. Um, you know, as a Jaeger, your whole goal is to not get naded, but I guess it just didn't work out for him. The nade from below was exactly what they needed. And they have to continue to play this the right way. 5v4, man advantage early. That's what we like to see. A 
another pick there from Russ onto Ginga. Frost will trade Russ right back out, making it a 4v3. Top Drag has to continue this push and either take it slow and make sure that they're droning, or they just have to play for trades. If they play for trades here, they're gonna win. Gotta figure out how to play the correct way. I mean, uh, this is just kind of a turtle right now. It's a 3BX, so right now, as defense, you should be looking for isolated picks. You should be hunting, seeing where people are placing. There you go, there's an isolated one. Absolutely, and sorry for the moment of intermission. My mother came in to bring me a second bang energy of the night. Lucius brings another pick to the team. Once again, continuing Sapuku with another pick, makes it a 3v1. They either have to play as a team here or drone the last guy out. Make the call, he's gonna get swung. Doesn't matter, Lucius will figure out how to get that last pick and win the round. Making the advantage now in top frag's favor, no longer with Lycus. Sly Wolf, what do you have to say? I think Lycus is a... Uh... Like his ult set is they're playing too much for the hunting the picks, but when they play really, when they work together, play a very tight game and play in proper positions and play the refrags, they, they're able to, you know, throw top frag through the loop and win some rounds really easily, not just in this map, but in general. When they try to play, you know, to match top frag speed and take the gunfights with them and go head to head in the ones, top frag is simply just going to outfrag you. It's the name. And, they're gonna, you're gonna spiral out of man control. And the round's gonna be over a lot quicker than you think. Absolutely. I think as it is right now, don't get me wrong, Lycus is definitely a big team of very talented players, but Top Frag is just a bunch of aimers. They're very smart, but they do have a very above average mechanical skill. I think that their aim is what's really holding them along for these past couple rounds they get the picks early and they continue to push with it we haven't seen a lot of whiffs by these guys uh table coming out to say that he hates nicks uh, definitely going to go on the record he requested it to be there so we'll be there uh, russ even getting in there in the alt chat definitely odd for him don't see him there often but the round's going to start now and let's see what lycus is going to do here Pushing out early, looks like they are going to go for the wall. The Thatcher Ace combo, Jaeger is on blue stairs. If he continues there, he could look for a pick. We have the garage hold by the Wamai. A great hold there. I think if anybody else holds garage, it's just bad. My holding garage brings a lot of utility and it's great for the team. Bandit looking to bandit trick here. Thatcher obviously is there as well. Um, they have the drone coming in from behind. Looks like he may see a frag grenade coming in from that window. Well, Mai will hopefully stop it. Yana is over there on the window. Let's see what they're going to do here. If Ace is smart, he's going to go for both walls immediately after the Thatcher goes off. But the bandit trick will continue to be accomplished. They haven't really done much right now. Yana gets the frag off. Bandit is down. The second nade comes in. So Puka with two picks now. The nade frag as well as another frag onto the smoke. Wow. That's going to start the round off early. There goes down Nyx, and into the site they go. We can see that Wamai is down. This is looking like it's going to be top frag's advantage here. They have to continue on with the round. Ginga is down. They probably don't know that. But the garage player is down. They aren't looking there. It looks like Russ is going to get cross-fired. We're not looking as good. It's still a 2v3, but these last three guys for Lycus, I'm sorry, the last three guys on top frag have to play together in order to win this round. They've taken garage control. Here comes top frag. What is Lycus going to do about it? They're coming in from two different sides. Lycus holding down in cash, a very smart idea. We just have to see what happens. We see that Tabled is playing patiently there in garage. Great play by him. A Attackers very very large amount of damage going out there to seppuku mute holding it down by the cash door he will get fragged out by tabled last guy sitting on red stairs they know where he's at they're sending some shots his way 
but this team top frag needs to play together to finish out the round you guys come on get in get this last guy just play for trades there goes the last frag table will win it out we are going to be pushing now into match point we have top frag favor i mean what are we thinking now at this point assault i mean is there much of a chance for lycus to come back here there there is a chance um I would take the tac T now, obviously. I don't know why they wouldn't be right now. Uh, I can't remember if this is actual match point or if this is map point. Um, for some reason, I just can't think of who has lead right now. This is actually match point. Uh, Top Rag is holding the 2-1 lead. Um, we are looking at a match point, not just a map point. Yeah, this is kind of crazy point, to me that map there's... Point and game point. Yeah, this sure this is. this seems kind of weird that you wouldn't be yeah, taking a tack to you right now to kind of sort out your defenses, because this is a defensive this, this is a defensive side at ban rate. Like you should be winning predominant of your defenses, and the fact that you're not means you should be like reflecting and saying like, okay, what's a way we can counteract some of these attacks a little bit better and we'll be good to go. You're on six four right now. Now's the time to use your tack T to get the ball rolling and try and push OT, especially on Absolutely. match point like this. Sly Wolf, anything to add there? Do you think that this map is very defender-sided? Do you think that maybe you disagree? What's your What's your point of view? Overall, Clubhouse is a very attacker-sided map. It's it supports a lot of easy access hard breaches. Like as you can see, all the teams are doing here. You have Ying and Thermite. Those are three hard breaches on the board. However, with even with the bans of the Habana and Maverick, I I still have to argue that it is an attacker-favored map, and it leans more that way, and by simply, you know, like I'm pretty sure they only got two attacking, if I remember correctly. I feel it was like a 3 3 split. Them. Oh, it was a 3 3 split? Yeah. My bad. I feel like even, okay, but even then, I feel like it still hurts them, and that they needed it some way to get an early lead, because by simply not getting the early lead, they're putting themselves at a disadvantage going into the next half. And you can see here, top frag, a team that likes to play aggressive, and a team that likes, that has a goal in mind when they attack, and then pushes through the goal. Um, Despite being aggressive, they're still structured on the attacking half in their own way, and it's showing because they're able to do their plan and do it well without punishment. Absolutely. Two different two differing point of views there by two great players. I gotta say, the two of you definitely brought up some valid points for either side to have an advantage here. Um, obviously, Top Frag here is playing for the picks. Um, what a... What a flick there by Barry onto that drone. Absolute demon mechanics, if you ask me. Top Frag will have the opening pick there on Thrave. Russ will be taking out the Wamai. He is going to take some damage in uh, as well. He's getting down to about half health, but they are going to be opening up that verticality. If they take vertical and they get maybe one more pick, they're looking at a pretty easy execute on site so long as they continue to play as a team and don't play solo picks the opening there it looks like they will be looking to open up the hatch great idea uh the impact trick will come out though nyx gets another pick there onto the mirror makes them in a 5v3 situation the mirror at the bottom of the stairs looks like he's sending a frag out <clears throat> nix is looking for another pick i'm sorry russ actually gets that pick there onto the cade it's a 5v2 once playing above for the flank we're gonna see what that flank does he's coming into the kitchen right now is gonna miss his shots nix will absolutely smoke him and then proceed to shoot his own teammate barry's the last one alive he will get the frag onto russ it is a 3v1 though this is match point. Barry will have to pull it together if he wants to bring his team, and it doesn't matter. There goes the game. Top Frag will win it. I think that was a great game by Lycus, but Top Frag just punished them for every mistake that they made. Assault, what's your thoughts on the match? Yeah, I think I think the big blunder there in the second half was not taking the tack T to breathe um, to kind of slow down the momentum. Uh, especially after the double round loss like that. Um, Absolutely. But overall, I think it was two great performances. Um, I don't think there's anything to be like upset with during that. Uh, I think both teams can kind of go and and say that they, they, they gave it 100. Um, yeah, I think that they can both go into that um, 
and say that they definitely have some stuff to, to think about and learn from. But I think overall they played very well. Um, I'm sorry to cut you off if you'd like to continue. No, you're good. I don't know uh, what Sly Wolf, Wolf, did you want to say anything about the uh, match? I think overall it, it truly showed what potential Top Fright has. I know they were a pickup stack going into this. I don't know if Tabled has any um, you know, recollection to keep the team together or anything, but I think it shows that they have the potential to keep the team going and that they have a potential as a five stack to actually play together and make plays and you know play as a team. Um, and I do agree with Salt's point of, point of view where, where you know, even under Lycan's, Lycus' thing is they still showed a good map. I think that things, at the end of the day, I would, as much as I agree with the statement, I also would disagree for the sole fact that it was a really sloppy game from Lycus. And not only Top Frag being a good team themselves, but also being able to punish Lycus for being that way, I feel like it led to a very dominant one-sided, a very dominant one-sided game. Absolutely, and that last half really just showed that Top Frag can punish Lycus if they do not drone the same way that they did the past couple maps. Obviously a great game from both teams, um, you know, for being a bias uh, caster, if you will. Um, you know, I was hoping that Top Frag would come out victorious, and they sure did. Don't get me wrong, Lycus is a great team, and I, have, I wish them nothing but the best. Um, just a great match overall. I really want to thank you guys for letting me come out and cast. Um, thank you to everybody in chat for making it seem like there's a lot of people watching, and there sure are more than usual. What a wonderful match. What a wonderful day. Thank you very much. See you later, guys. See you. All right, guys, we are going to be going into the interview now. We have Russ and Nix from Top Frag. Russ, let's start out with you. Uh, you definitely told me that you were going to drop 20 kills this game, and you didn't. How do you feel about that one? Hey, my, all I'm going to say, my team baited me. That's all I got to say. I got the entry picks. <laughs> wow. What a yeah. accusation coming from Russ. You guys did win, though. I think you guys played very well. Do you guys have anything... Um, you know, specific that you want to work on, um, uh, maybe coming into a next no. match. I'm honestly like I'm better than this entire team, so it's whatever. Interview's over. Interview's over. <laughs> <laughs> the, the ego coming out of this guy is crazy. Interview's over. <laughs> I mean, especially dying on that last round. I mean, you got to think it was a four v one, and you managed to swing and yeah. die to a pistol whip rust. That's a pretty bad look. Uh, yeah. I gotta say, I was just giving him the kill, you know, give him that satisfaction. Maybe he kind of could have won it, but that wasn't the case. He didn't I win guess it. so. If I'm, gonna, if I'm gonna chime in real quick, there's a lot of frags where Russ just got robbed on. I know I had a couple from him, and I know Seth took like five from him, so. Uh, Let's look, how many assists did he have at the end of that game? Looks like he had four. I guess if we assume that he got those kills, he would even out to 20. I will give you the 20. I will say that you are that guy. 
Now I'm going to tell you to shut up for the rest of the interview. Nix, let's talk, buddy. What do you think right. about the game for the pickup team? How was it? Uh, you know, we kind of went in with the mentality of fuck it, we ball, and uh, we fucked and we balled. So, I not... mean, but who were you fucking? Uh, I was fucking third the entire time, like straight up. Wow. Wow. Are you going to say that to his face, though? Uh, actually, I tried to, but he every time I joined VC with him, he'd immediately leave like a little, like, I don't know. I'm not gonna start anything, but he would just immediately leave like he was kind of scared of me. It was kind of weird. Seems but, uh, like maybe he could be, um, you know, Nick's. You are a powerhouse. What are you coming in at about? I don't know, five eleven. You know, like six, two, six, two thirty. Six two, two forty maybe. Okay, okay. Little, what little, a little powerhouse. Meat, little meat on them bones, you know. Just a little bit. You're definitely sitting behind that desk. I know you are sweating in every oh, crack and crevice right now. I don't want to imagine. Wide. I don't even think you need deodorant, big fella. I think that you could use some baby powder right now. Mm -hmm. Russ, would you say that you're stronger than Nick's? Oh, yeah, 110%. I think we should fight next year. I mean, we should all, yeah. all spar. I oh, think yeah, that we are going to go ahead and take the Premier League into a actual boxing match uh, between Russ and Nick's. If you guys would like to see that, I think that we need to vote for that in chat. In the meantime, I think that that was a great game, you guys. Were there any things that you wanted to say about Lycus? Hopefully uh, something like a compliment. Uh, I mean, geez. they played good in Oregon, but like what T7 team doesn't, T4 team doesn't play good in Oregon. True. Oregon's, you know, just... They kind, of, they kind of smoked us 7-2, which kind of uh, demoralizing, I gotta say. It was kind of fucked up. No, but honestly, GG's though, question. it was fun. Absolutely. Sly Wolf, would you like to chime in at all for this interview? Absolutely. Um, first off, GG's guys. I didn't get to play y'all on TPL, but from watching your games and all that, you guys do play really good. But my one question is, what do you think was Lycus's biggest downfall in their gameplay? Being mid. Uh, no, they're actually way too over aggressive and need to win their ones. Like, that is yeah, from an honest standpoint. They did lose a ton of ones that could rely on Jinja too much. Yeah, they rely on him way too much. When Jinja's fragging. They're they're chilling, but when he gets a kill and then he gets refragged though, it's uh it's not looking too bad for them. Yeah. Like our main objective was just to kill Jinja, and then once we killed them, there was there is one round where we killed Jinja off rip, and then they won it. That was only one round they won like that entire game. Do, Every do time you think? Them, they won the round. Do you think having yeah. less prep time as a team actually helped you, or do you think if you had more time as a team, it would have been a a, a wider score margin? Mm. Yeah, you could say that. Maybe we would have got seven. Definitely maybe, been better. You might not have lost seven two in Oregon if you maybe had. Yeah, that was gotcha. a little warm up game though. I needed it. Absolutely. Well, it was a great match between the two of you guys, and uh, really great to interview you guys. I'm very big fans. Um, you know, hopefully you guys will let me play with you one time, maybe. Dick bug. Dick, Dick bug. bug game. But uh, I just want to thank uh, Premier League for letting me come out and cast so last minute. I want to thank both uh, Nick's and Russ for coming in for the interview. And uh, any any last words that we wanted to say before we cut the stream? Um, you guys all suck. Goodbye. <laughs> what are the last words? Good night, guys. Heard. All right. That inspires well. me to beat them next season. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, uh, we'll cut it out here. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, ending now. Good night. Everyone, go home. Good night. <laughs> good night. Get some sleep. <laughs>